This might be the only camera of its kind. A twin lens 35mm SLR with reflex style viewing. It's large and unusual and you'll probably never see another like it. What is it? Let's watch the video. There have been many unusual cameras throughout the years, and here's one of them, the Agfa Optima Reflex. In the late 1950s and early 1960s, Agfa began to produce the Optima range, a series of simpler 35mm cameras. Most were of modest specifications, offering either an Agnar or Apatar lens and zone focusing in selenium meters. Some of the more advanced models had rangefinder focusing and the excellent Solinar lens. One of the most unusual, at least in terms of its physical appearance, was the Optima Reflex, a twin lens reflex camera with pentaprism viewing and focusing and using standard 35mm film. At first sight it appears to be a huge camera, and in fact it is taller than most 35mm cameras, including SLRs. And uh, you know, I think for comparison's sake, let's put it next to a let's put it next to a Canon AE1. This was among the downsized a uh, series of 35 millimeter cameras that were produced in the mid 1970s, and of course, the how old downsizing came came about because of uh, Olympus, or Olympus was the first. You can see that um, shoulder to shoulder, the Optima Reflex is actually quite a bit taller. When measured this way, you can see how the uh, Canon A1 is actually wider than the Optima, Ref Optima Reflex, although it's longer. Uh, this is actually probably easier to handle than the Optima Reflex. Real quickly, let's take a look at the weight of each camera because I think that will be uh, telling. So here's my handy dandy postal scale that I got at a uh, thrift shop. Okay, this comes in at one, one pound 13 ounces, so it's nearly two pounds. I think we could probably say that's one pound 14 ounces. And that weighs in at one pound 10 ounces. So although it's only one pound 11 ounces, Although it's just a, a several ounces difference, you can really get an idea that this is a very sturdy camera. Let's take a quick look at the features. As I mentioned, uh, this has two lenses. This is the taking lens, which is an Apatar. In this case, it's a triplet. The Apatar I've found to be a very good triplet. There are a lot of triplets out there. That means it has three lens elements. And uh, they range from uh, you know pretty average to mediocre to very good. And this is one of the better ones. The taking lens is not really specified, so it's just a lens. Uh, you, you can see from the re blue reflective coating, or the blue uh, reflections in here of my ring lights, you can see that this is, in fact, a coated lens. This is your focusing um, collar. You can see it's scalloped, and inside the scallops are small serrations to make, make it easier for you to grasp. Uh, as far as I can tell, there's no plastic used in this camera. Uh, there probably is a little bit right here. Uh, this is your frame counter dial, and I believe the, the covering over that is plastic. So, um, in general, this is a majority uh, metal uh, film. This is a majority, excuse me, this is a majority metal uh, camera. This is your selenium cell, which is essentially your light meter. There are two, two types of shooting. Uh, one is fully automatic. Well, I guess there's three types. Uh, one is, uh, the second one is, and if you look here, you can see on the front of the camera, you can see there's a little flash symbol here. And on this side, this side shows B for bulb, which means this shutter stays open for as long as you depress the shutter release. Uh, in bulb and in flash, you can select the aperture. And if you look in the very small window, you'll see as it changes, uh, the aperture, um, you can see as you move the dial, the aperture changes. So that's true for both for the bulb setting or for the, and for the flash setting. In automatic, uh, you do not select the aperture or the shutter speed. This uses a very simple pre-programmed uh, selection of um, shutter speeds and uh, apertures. So your only choice is you get to focus and you get to take your photo. This is your viewfinder, very large. Uh, inside the viewfinder, you will see a diagonally split image. And on the left side is a small flag. 
um, w when you're out when you're out shooting, there will be two indicators. Uh, one, first, it'll be black, and that means you haven't depressed the shutter release. Uh, number two is if you depress the shutter release and there's a small green indicator, that means that there's sufficient light to take a photo. If you depress the shutter release and there's a small red indicator, that means you don't have enough light. So keep that in mind. Uh, shutter speeds, well, apertures run from, I believe, F... Apertures run from f2.8 to f16. Uh, this is a 45 millimeter lens. And shutter speeds... I believe this to be a Prontor or Pronto shutter, and shutter speeds would then run from, I would say, 1 200 or 250 of a, of a second down to 1 125. There are no slow speeds uh, with this camera. There are two little uh, knobs, buttons, whatever on the back. This is your rewind switch. You just It's just press and release. And this is a resets the frame counter. This actually is a countdown frame counter. You would load your film, fire off your two blanks, and then reset this to 36. On this side is your uh, film speed dial. This small switch allows you to turn the dial, so it's a two-handed procedure. Once it's in place, you can see how it locks. And uh, on the bottom, you have your, re your rewind crank, your tripod socket, which is oddly uh, not in line with the uh, center of the lens or center of the camera and uh, I don't know why they put it here because generally it's best to put it here because it gives it doesn't give you an unbalanced camera because of the weight of the camera right it's going to tend to want to pull to one side your rewind crank is released by pulling this little button in the direction of the arrow and you simply uh, rewind your film and when you're finished, push that back in. This is your film advance. Not only does it advance the film, but it also tensions the shutter. And as I mentioned, this is a front-mounted shutter release. Pretty quiet in operation. Of course, the one disadvantage of all front-mounted shutter releases is that there is a tendency to pull the camera down when you release the camera. I'm actually not a fan of the front mounted shutter release. Uh, Agfa used this on a number of cameras, including some that I like quite a bit. Uh, I wish that they hadn't. I really like the shutter release up here, but, um, well, as they like to say, it is what it is. There's not much you can do about it. That's pretty much the ins and outs of the camera. Now in use, this, this is a very easy camera to uh, use despite its considerable weight. It allows you 35 millimeter style viewing, um, and because it is a twin lens, the um, the the uh, viewfinder never blacks out. One of the nicer things about this is that it's fairly quiet. I'd like to also mention that although the prism housing looks like it's removable, like you would be able to put in a waist level finder or something else, in fact, it's not. Uh, these screws are here here and here and then on the back simply to remove the viewfinder should there be some uh, dust or debris or something else inside there. That way you could remove the viewfinder, clean it out and then replace it. There's a couple of pressure springs in there, not circular springs, they're more like uh, little leaf springs in under the viewfinder and that's to really keep the uh, uh, the, um, the, view, uh, the entire uh, focusing screen uh, flat as flat as possible. You have some strap lugs right here if you want to put it on a strap. You can see how it tilts forward even when I do this. Oh, finally, on the bottom of the camera, you'll see a small post here. Its sole purpose is to keep the camera from tipping forward should you place it on a table. Because often what happens is it tips forward and then it keeps tumbling and it continues to tumble and it tumbles its way right off of a table right onto the ground, so not good. So that's the only purpose of this small post right here. You can also see it says, um, made in Germany. Interesting that it says made in Germany because at that time when this was made, there was East Germany and West Germany, but perhaps Agfa felt it was just Germany. Not much else to say about this camera. Um, I it, it is, as I mentioned, it is an unusual camera. I believe there might have been maybe one other twin lens uh, 
camera, but uh, tw twin lens 35 millimeter camera, but I don't know that there was any that offered uh, 35 millimeter single lens reflex style viewing. So it, it is unusual in that you get to focus like as if it were a 35 millimeter, but it's not. I would say that if you're out and about shooting with this camera, it's unlikely that you'll see another person with it. If you do, stop by and say hi. Could be me. As always, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you'd like to see any cameras uh, featured in a future uh, segment, please let me know in the comments below.